If you're an artist, a band, a singer songwriter, producer, it doesn't matter, and you're trying to get fans, you're trying to build an authentic, great fan base online, but you're just not making it happen. <clears throat> you're not getting the likes, you're not get the, getting the subscriptions, you're not getting the attention, you're not getting just any of the love that you think you should be getting by all the countless hours that you've been putting into uploading music and videos and doing campaigns and just trying to get people to latch onto your music and you're trying to build a buzz. Trust me, I've been there. I know how frustrating and just aggravating that is to beat your head against the wall, try a whole bunch of stuff and just nothing's really working. I have some advice for you that might completely turn things around for you. Now, <clears throat> I have to say though, it has nothing to do with music licensing, okay? So this channel, if you're new to the channel, I pretty much only talk about music licensing on this channel and how I've been able to create a full-time income by creating music that works for TV shows, movies, and commercials. But that's not what this video is about. But I've gotten enough questions from artists, from producers that are trying to go the traditional route, trying to you know just sell albums, sell downloads, go on tour, kind of just go the artist route, that I figured I might as well have one video that I can give some practical advice that I think really, <clears throat> excuse me, really could help you if you're just not getting the traction that you feel you should. Um, the biggest <clears throat> mistake that I think all producers and musicians and bands make, I'd say maybe not all, but 90 plus percent, is that you are trying to chase the current sound, okay? And you, this video right now, even though this is, you know, middle of 2018, will be relevant in 2019, 20, 21, and, it, and it's relevant in 1963, okay? Chasing the current sound can only get you so far, okay? So, and I've been in many bands, many projects before where we did this and we made this mistake where whatever the hot artist was at the time, we said, let's just make music like that. And then people will like us because people like that. And so we'll just sort of like through osmosis kind of sneak into people's subconscious and their conscious mind and they'll love us because we sound like what they already like. There's some truth to that, okay? So I'm not going to just write that off as if that's a horrible <clears throat> strategy, but there needs to be one major huge difference and caveat that you throw into that strategy, okay? So if you're an artist and that's what you've been doing or you're a band and you're like, well, I love this new band. They put out a cool album. Let's make an album like theirs. And you're just sort of listening to them and really using them as your reference of going forward. That's not a bad idea in terms of making sure that your tracks sound modern and relevant. But you got to remember, <clears throat> if you're emulating an artist that's already released something, they wrote that music six months ago or maybe a year ago. <clears throat> so the music that you finally hear being released to the public, it's already old. Right? It's new to the public, it might be new to you, but that sound has already been done. Okay, So if you're always chasing whatever the newest release is, you're actually six months to a year behind the trends. right? And so those artists now are going on to something else while you're emulating their last release. So you understand how in that strategy, you're always behind the times, no matter what you do. Okay, You're always going to be following what other people have always done. So the, by the time you get there, even if you have a great sounding album, you're the sort of knockoff cheap version of it. And it's like, okay, that's cool, but that was done last year. It's not exciting, it's not fresh, it's not new, okay? Which brings me to the second point. I guess this is the, kind of the bigger caveat. You don't know, there's no need in the marketplace for a sort of duplicate of the artist that you love, right? So in other words, you should think, and I know this makes some artists and bands uncomfortable, but you have to think about your, um, your band, your product, your music as like a cereal box on the shelf in a grocery store. That's, that's what it is for the consumer, okay? Well, think about it. You go to iTunes, what do you see? Do you see the actual discs and the waves? No, you see an actual album cover, right? That's been designed. It's got packaging. It's got marketing around it, right? It's a pretty looking package. It's supposed to attract your attention. It's supposed to sort of convey a meaning or a message or to get you to go, ooh, this is interesting. Let me grab that right? Music is a commodified product, okay? In this current age, this is what music is being used for, okay? It is a product that is bought and sold, licensed. That's what I do, obviously, with music licensing. So let's say you love, you know, Avicii just passed away, so we're going to use Avicii. He's just the most recent producer I've been thinking about. You want to make music like Avicii, you love his tracks, you've been following him for years, and so you make tracks that sound just like Avicii, there might be some people that like that, but we already have an Avicii. 
You know what I'm saying? We've already we, the market already has that. It's almost like there's a Fruit Loops up there, and you're like, well, I'm gonna be Fruity Loops, but pretty much the same thing. I mean, you might get some spillover, but you're not gonna get the success that Fruit Loops had because they jumped out and said, we are different, right? We're colorful and we're different than you know Cheerios and Frosted Flakes and Captain Crunch. We're different from all of those because we are our own voice. We are our own brand, our own thing, and we have our own point of view and our own marketing, okay? So that's what you have to remember when you're putting music up next to popular artists that you're trying to emulate. We don't need another Avicii. The market doesn't need like a duplicate knockoff version of Avicii. There's tons of those, okay? And that's why most of those people, you never hear them. Avicii got big because he made a sound all of his own. You know, think about Zed, uh, Cascade, Dead Mouse. okay? These are all producers that, if you're following these kind of producers, when you think about them, you hear their sound instantly and you see their marketing right away, right? They've created their own unique pitch, their own niche. And where does that all come from? comes from their heart, it comes from their soul, it comes from what they're saying in their music, it comes from how they're producing their music, it comes from the chord progressions, the drums they select. They are, they have something to say as an artist and they are not just doing what other people are doing to try to emulate other people. Yes, they're definitely influenced by their peers and by other producers and you are and I am, we can't get around that. But you better have a big nugget of something really unique, something that's just you, that nobody else is doing. Uh, I remember growing up and I was really into rock music, into metal music. And when a new artist would come up, I remember if I liked him or why, you know, I always wondered like, why did this artist break through when, you know, I was in a band and I'm trying to break through the radio market. How come some bands break through and others don't? I realized the formula was fairly predictive for the bands that broke through. They sounded enough like what was going on now that it didn't completely surprise you of like, why is there a polka band on the radio, right? Or on the rock radio station. So it sounded like a modern rock track. They were kind of in the same lane, but they had a tiny little twist. The vocalist had a different way of singing, of approaching, of screaming. The guitars had really kind of a unique way of, of making riffs. The drums had different kind of a rhythm. There was one or two little tiny twists on what you've been hearing from all the other artists. And that's what gave that artist or that band its unique voice and what made people go, I can latch onto this, right? There's something, there's some meat here. There's meat on the bone for me to go, yeah, there's something there. I want to take a part of this. Maybe there's something deeper, right? Maybe this one song is not all this artist has to offer. This artist seems like it has some depth to it, you know, or this singer or whoever it is, right? And you want to be that band. You want to be that singer songwriter. You want to be that producer. When people hear your music, they go, that's interesting. That's not just like everything else. It's not like, oh yeah, it's cool. It kind of sounds like everybody else. No, but something that just tiny, tiny little twist, tiny alteration on how you're, um, and again, don't do this just to be different, okay? Like that's not the point of this video is for you to go like, oh, okay, now Jesse's saying I need to be different, so let me just throw a kazoo in there. That's not what you need to be doing. You need to spend some time and think about what is it that you really want to do and say as an artist, right? And get down to those core beliefs and try to convey them through your music, your point of view, your perceptions about the world, relationships, the universe, doesn't matter. And just be true to yourself, right? Write lyrics and melodies that are singing true to you, right? Just because everybody's singing na 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 in their choruses, you don't gotta do that, okay? We've got plenty of those. There's plenty of artists doing that. Don't worry about that. That, that is taken, okay? All these trendy things that happen, they are taken, okay? But if you want those core fans that are gonna buy everything you put out and beg you for new material and beg you for merchandise and beg you to go on tour so they can buy a ticket and show up, you gotta give them something, something authentic. And there's nothing more authentic than who you really are, right? At the core of who you are, of what you really wanna say and share uh, with the world. And one thing that might help you sort of get the sort of uh, big 10,000 foot view on this is imagine yourself as an 80 year old man looking back on your music career. Do you wanna look back and say, yeah, I had, a, I had a music career and I basically just sort of copied what all the popular artists were doing, sort of kind of made it my own and people sort of believed it enough to buy my music. Is that really the legacy your career, you want your career to have? Or do you wanna look back on your career and say, I made a difference in people's lives. I said something, right? I had a statement, I had meaning to my music and I really shared and try to really um, connect with people and improve the world in some way with my music and I stayed true to what I wanted to do. The beautiful thing about the internet is that we don't have to chase the trends 
so much anymore. There are still trending new sounds. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But, you know, the sort of streamlined distribution where like this is where we get all of our hit songs and these, these are all the approved artists that we all have to love. That's gone. Radio's dying. Okay, that stuff is all going away right now. You can go create your own clan. You can go create your own tribe. You can create your own fan base and you can transcend through state boundaries, country boundaries, continent boundaries, you know, maybe one day universe boundaries, who knows? But for right now, go find your fans, right? And in order to find them, be yourself. If you're yourself and you're marketing, again, even if you have the best music on earth, you better be shouting from the rooftops everywhere you can. Check me out, check me out, check me out. Do not be ashamed to self-promote. You must self-promote if you want to get the attention, okay? It's one thing some artists have a trouble have trouble with. You've got to get over that. I don't know, you know, do some psychotherapy or something and just you got to get over the fact that you have to sell yourself. You have to sell your music and you got to put it in people's faces because, you know, a lot of people will say no. But there's some people that will say yes and they deserve to hear about you. OK, so you need to get through all of those no's to get to the yeses. So just get through them and put yourself out there. But that's how you can do it. Right. And if and if you are yourself and you are authentic to who you are and you keep shouting and putting it out there, you will start to see a growth and you will start seeing real fans that aren't just like, oh, it's kind of cool casual fan, you know, the kind that like your stuff and then they never really interact with you again. <clears throat> You're going to get those fans that comment on everything you upload, love everything you do, can't wait for more, psychoanalyze your lyrics, they're looking up your lyrics. What does he mean by that? Those are the kind of fans you want, right? They're the ones that are really invested and are the most committed to you and your success in the long run. If you want to get those, there's no shortcuts for that. Got to be authentic and you got to be yourself. Now, if you don't want to do any of that stuff, you don't want to become an artist and you want to do just music licensing, uh, it is the actual path that I have taken and I do think it's great and very realistic to make a full-time income. So if this is brand new to you, you've never heard of music licensing, you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, there is a link underneath all of my videos to enroll in a free five-day course and that course can get you started in learning on how you can get started, uh, how the business works, uh, what kind of music can get a lot of placements, uh, what kind of real kinds of income you can actually look forward to once you get started in this, how long it's going to take, all of those questions are answered in this five-day course. So just make sure you click on the link below and, uh, and you'll find out all about it. If you love this video, share it with somebody who might need it. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks.